Happy Halloween from the McKinney Center. My name is Wendy Gorley, a local storyteller, and I'm here to share a Halloween story with you. No one even knew if the old man named his daughter, but she was such a frail fledgling and had the most lilting voice that folks just called her Birdie. They lived way up in the holler, and she was as elusive as a warbler. You were more likely to hear her singing than to catch sight of her. Oh, the cuckoo is a pretty bird, and she sings as she flies. She tells us good tidings, and she tells us no lies. Some seasons, Birdie would make her way down into town to go to school. That's where she met Johnny. Hey, what's all this singing you're doing everywhere you go? Well, it's just bird twitter. Bird twitter? What's that? Well, it's just the birds, you know, sing and talk to me and I'm just talking back. Well, uh, I wish you'd come and twitter to me sometimes. And as these two grew older, the whole town just knew they were going to get married. But then the war came and Johnny didn't come home. And Bertie's songs changed. As time draws near, my dearest dear, when you and I must part, how little you know of the grace and awe of my poor aching heart. Each night I suffer for your sake. Believe me when I say you are the one that I love best until my dying day. As time went on, Bertie stayed closer to home and to her garden. The folks that saw her the most were the ones that made up their way the, up the holler to buy her pa's whiskey. One that came more than most was Buck. Now Buck had spent a year out on the plains wrestling cattle, and he had come back into town with a fist full of lasso, a mouthful of stories, and pockets full of money. And he loved not only Pa's whiskey, but the nightly poker games. Well, one day when no one else was around, Bertie was out working and singing in her garden. I wish my breast was made of glass wherein you could behold upon my heart your name I wrote in letters made of gold. In letters made of gold, my love, believe me what I say. You are the one that I love best until my dying day. Afternoon, Birdie. Afternoon, Buck. Uh, pause out at the still. That's what you're needing. What if he's not the one I'm needing? And he took a step into the garden. Well, there's nobody here else for you. And he took a step closer. Come on, Birdie. I know that name you wrote on your heart is mine. You ain't never going to have no part of me. And she ran from the garden. Come on, Birdie, come on back. <laughs> Someday you're going to change your tune. Someday I'm going to own you. And that night at the poker game, Buck made sure that her father was, had plenty to drink and kept raising the ante until he was muddled and mired in debt. Listen here, you old man, I now own everything you have. Your house, your steel, all your money. But uh, I'll give it all back to you 
if you give me Birdie to wife. Well, where are you going to take her? <laughs> Don't you worry, none. You're, you're not going to lose your little housemaid. I'll just move in here. I'll even help you with your still. It'll be like killing two birds with one stone. And so without a buy or leave to Birdie, the deal was struck. And like a bird in a cage, Birdie's songs grew silent. She spent most of her days cooking and cleaning after Buck and his friends, and it wasn't long until her pa sickened and died. One night, she was so bone weary. It was fall and she could tell that the weather was turning. And she finally laid down so exhausted when she heard, Birdie? Yes, Buck. Why don't you come on out here and let's show these fellers our favorite game? And she didn't dare defy him. When she stepped out in the yard, the men's breath hung chill in the air. Look at my little brood hen, fellers. Isn't she pretty as a pitcher? Bertie, why don't you show them how graceful you are? Why don't you do your little dance? And he began to let out a length of rope on his lasso and to twirl it lazily above the ground. Why don't you hop, little bird? Bertie knew no matter how fast she ran, no matter how much she darted and leapt, that that noose would reach out and grab her. But that night, she looked around at that circle of sneering faces, and something inside of her just snapped. She didn't know how she was going to do it, but she was going to get through that circle, and she was going to keep on going. Don't make me come over there and get you hopping. I'm a coming. You would have thought that she was about to leave the ground and fly. She was going so fast. The men were shouting and cheering, and she was just about through that circle when crack, that lasso caught her around the wrist at the last moment and snap, pulled back sharp as Buck pulled on that rope. She almost stumbled to the ground from the pain, but she slipped that noose off of her fingers and she kept on going. Oh, come on, Bertie. Come on on back. We're just having fun. But she didn't stop until she was well hid in the trees. Come on back, I say. I'm going to lock you out. I, you're going to be sorry. But she held still. She must have taken the fun out of the evening for she could hear the men climb in their cars and drive out of the, the holler. Buck called from the front porch. It's your last chance, Bertie. You're going to be sorry when you come back begging for mercy. And she heard him slam the front door and slide the deadbolt. It was awfully early for a killing frost, but it sure felt like one. The cold crept into Bertie's thin cotton dress, and her feet already were numb. Maybe, maybe if I just go along fast enough, I, I can keep warm until I get to town. But with each step, she grew colder. The pain in her arm began to recede as her, as her head started to feel fuzzy and light. Her, her heart, a hummingbird, beating fast and shallow. But she kept plodding on for what seemed like hours until she tripped over a tree root and sprawled into a pile of dead leaves. And she lay there and listened to her heart slow, slow, and stop. Sometime later that night, as one day eases into the next, the full moon came up over the rise and a slash of light fell across Buck on his bed. He stirred. He thought he heard something. The blackest crow that ever flew will plummet from its flight. Birdie? 
and then he remembered what had happened. I told you not to come back here. You go away now. But the voice came closer. It was Bertie's, but it was somehow clear and, and strong like a bird set free. If ever you do harm to me, bright day will turn to night. Bertie! Go away! And the voice got louder and louder until it was just ringing in his ears. Go away, birdie! Bright day will turn to night, my love. The elements will mourn. If ever you prove false to me, the seas will rage and burn. The next day, they found Bertie lying still and blue in a nest of leaves, her arm twisted like a broken wing. They searched that holler for a week looking for Buck and never did see any sign of him, except for one curious thing. On the porch, there was a, a fuzzy pile of fibers stirring in the breeze. Upon examination, it was determined that it was the remains of Buck's lasso. You know, folks say that you can still hear a birdie singing up that holler. Some say that it's the most beautiful song of lilting love. Others will tell you that they are notes that will bring on your deepest nightmares. I just think folks find what's already in their own hearts. You gotta watch out for that bird set free. Believe me what I say. You are the one that I love best until my dying day.